Welcome back to the Mighty Blues. It is the instant match reaction. Everton nil, Wolverhampton Wanderers won at Goodison Park. The result that I didn't think Everton could afford, you know, two hours ago before the game. And as the game went on, I still am baffled at how we've lost that game of football, to be honest with you. Very similar to the game against Fulham. Um, Everton have once again lost to a team that truly are terrible. And I know that that might upset some Wolves fans. I know that that might seem disrespectful, but I think a lot of Wolves fans will agree they were absolutely awful today. And there won't be many worse teams that come to Goodison Park this season than that Wolves team. <clears throat> I just... I, I, I don't know where we go from here. I really, really don't. Um, I think the manager got the team news correct. He took Michael Keane out. He put Janet Branthwaite in. He put Lewis Dobbin on the wing. Now, look, I, I don't think Lewis Dobbin is, is ready to be a Premier League footballer, and, and, and I think he very clearly proved that today. But, you know, I appreciate the decision to take that risk and to give him a go and to, you know, to at least give us something to be excited about. He obviously had Dan Juma in there. Uh, and I think barring James Garner at right midfield, which was a terrible decision, and James Garner was absolutely hopeless today, um, I, I actually think the manager got it quite spot on in terms of his team news. He brought Yusuf Chimiti on with 30 minutes to go, which, again, is something that we've all called for. And I get the feeling that the manager couldn't have done much more today to get a, a result out of that game for Everton. The reality of the situation is is we've lost three games on the bounce now. Two of them have been home games against um, poor teams. And people can have a go at me for that. People can uh, criticise me. People can say, oh, you're being disrespectful. Wolves are terrible. Wolves are terrible. And they were terrible today. That game for 85 minutes was like watching two teams who were simply incapable of scoring a goal. It was very even. They get forward. I think we were the better team in terms of the, the chances created, but we couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. And every time they went forward, they couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. And yet somehow, Everton have still managed to lose that game. <laughs> you know, we've managed to lose a game against a team that uh, are very similar to us in the fact that they don't score goals. And whilst, uh, again, I, I think Dice is is probably maybe uh, you know a uh, a little bit um absent to, to criticism today because of the decisions he made before the game which were correct i still think you lose three games on the bounce in the premier league two of them home games against poor teams that is going to be pressure on you and people can have a go at me for this people can uh, call me out people can do whatever they want i really don't give a shit I just don't think he lasts the season. I don't know. That might be right. That might be wrong. And people might say that's harsh because, um, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> there's bigger issues with this football club. And there is. But I just get the feeling that I just, I just get the feeling that he will lose fans pretty quickly. And as I said, results like that, if they continue, performances like that, if they continue the manager will lose his job at some point or another, whether it's this side of Christmas, whether it's the other side of Christmas. It just very, very much feels like the same old, same old. I, I remember watching a film a couple of years ago, and it was this film about this girl that was constantly reliving the last day of her life. And as it come to an end, she was murdered, but then when she thought she was murdered, she'd wake up and she'd relive the day over and over and over and over again. And she'd always get murdered at the end of it, no matter how much she tried to stop it, <clears throat> no matter how much she tried to break this, she would always, always, uh, you know, come to the same fate. Very much like Groundhog Day, and that very much is what supporting Everton Football Club is. It's Groundhog Day. You know, every season rolls into one, and Sean Dyche might be, as I said, void of criticism for today because of the decisions that he made, but I just can't help but feel like by January, we'll be looking for a new manager because that's what we did last season. That's what we did the season before. <clears throat> One thing is for absolute certain, and that is the owners of this football club, the chairman and the owner himself, Farhad Mashiri, are fucking disgraceful. Absolutely fucking disgraceful 
what they have let happen to our football club. They have allowed our football club to rot to its core for years and years and years whilst claiming to be the best Evertonians, the biggest Evertonians. You're not the period of fucking clowns. Horrible, horrible clowns. And you don't deserve to be anywhere near our football club. And what we've watched today is 11 players who aren't good enough. A manager who will come under a lot of criticism today. He got it right. The last two games, he didn't get it right. <clears throat> and it is all at the watch of those two people. If they had any dignity, if they had anything about them, if they had any fucking bollocks, they'd walk away from this. Stick their hands up and say, do you know what? We got that wrong. We'll walk away from it. But they haven't because the pair of them are cowards. Horrible cowards. The fucking pair of them. Cowards. And what they have allowed to happen to our football club is nothing short of a fucking crime. And they should be put in prison behind bars for what they've let happen to our fucking football club. It is a disgrace. An absolute disgrace. We've got 11 players on the pitch, most of whom are simply incapable of playing football to the level we need them to play at. We can't score goals. We've needed a striker since I was six months fucking old and we haven't bought one. And yet, all as we get every week is, oh, the club tried their best to make this deal happen. The club tried their best to make that deal happen. Why is it? Why is it that every fucking deal that falls through, falls through at its final stages? I read a tweet at half time today from Fabrizio Romano talking about Beto coming in. Everton have reached an agreement with Beto. Beto's going to come in. Here we go soon. Now, if that was any other football club in the world, they'd sit there and go, right, okay, that's in, that's done. You know, he, he's an Everton player, an Everton player. But that's not what happens with Everton, is it? I've watched fan channels who have uploaded welcome to Villa, welcome to Man United videos after people like Fabrizio Romano have tweeted the deal is done. But you can't do that as an Evertonian. Because when it gets to its latter stages of just need the confirmation now from the people at the top, it fucking falls through. Because the people at the top of this fucking football club are useless, haven't got a clue what they are doing, and I'm pretty convinced at the moment they're there just to make our lives worse. It's so evident what Everton are lacking, and the fate isn't just going down to the championship, it isn't. And I am at the point now with this, emotionally, where if you were to say to me, Cam, I've just gone a year in the future. A year in the future, I've seen what's happened a year from now. You've got a choice. Everton can either go down and you'll do well in the championship, or you'll stay up by the skin of your teeth again this season. But next season, you'll be terrible again and it'll be horrible every week again. I'd go down, I'll be honest, I'm not asked what people say, I'm not asked what people think I'd rather go down, because I can't do this every week, I honestly cannot do this every week, I can't, I just want to watch Everton win games of football, do you know what, I'll be fucking made up on Wednesday if we beat Doncaster, I'll be made up, I'll open a bevy, I'll be having a laugh, I'll be fucking made up, and people can say, oh it's embarrassing, you'd only beat Doncaster, it's embarrassing, I don't give a fuck, I just want to see Everton win games of footy, I don't care who we're playing, Arsenal or fucking Accrington Stanley, I'm not asked I just want to see Everton win games of footy because this is killing me it is fucking killing me and it doesn't seem like it's gonna get any better <clears throat> it really really doesn't Wolves are terrible whether people want to admit it or not whether people want to tell themselves how great we are and how brilliant we were again today <laughs> yet the performance was better today than it was on Sunday against Villa of course it was the performance was very good against Fulham, but it doesn't fucking matter. You can't go to the Premier League at the end of a season and go, whoa, 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 whoa. Yet we've only got six points and we're going down. But did you see how well we played against Fulham? Did you see how well we played against Wolves? We should stay up on that basis. It's not how it works. It's not how it works. This team is so void of any quality going forward, so void of any creativity, so void of any idea, so void of any leadership, so void of any football and IQ and intelligence it's void of everything and we have got four days five days six what is it six days 
to sign a centre forward, a creative midfielder, a right winger, and based off of today, a left back, because Ashley Young was terrible again today and has been terrible ever since he came into the football club, I'll be honest. <clears throat> Football is a very, very, very simple game. A very, very simple game. You put the ball in the back of the opposition's net and you stop the ball from going in the back of your net and you will win. If you don't stop the ball going in the back of your net and you don't put the ball in the opposition's net, you will lose. If you lose enough games, you will be relegated into the division below you. Simple. It's black and white. It's not hard. It's not difficult. It's an easy game made difficult. And the simple fact of the matter is Everton cannot score goals and do not score goals. And that has been proven again today. How many opportunities have we had over those two games at Goodison Park? Let me just see. So we had 19 against Fulham uh, a, cu a couple of weeks ago. We had 15 shots today. So that's what? 34 shots. 34 shots in two games and we haven't scored a goal or well, we scored two goals one of them was disallowed and one of them obviously was 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 uh, blown up before it went in the back of the net 34 chances 34 chances and we haven't scored a single goal now i'd love everton to go and sign beto next week, and all of a sudden, we score three every week, it ain't gonna happen, it ain't gonna happen, Beto is somebody that knows where the back of the net is, and can put the ball in the back of the net, who's creating for him, who's creating for him, people can say we created lots of chances today, we created the couple, Dan Juma I thought was poor in front of, go in front of goal, he was, Dobbin I thought showed that he isn't ready, but who is creating five, six clear chances every week, nobody, how likely is it Everton go and sign a centre forward that can score goals and a, a creative player that can create within the next five days, six days? The fact of the matter is, defensively, we fall to bits. And going forward, we can't score. Even if we <clears throat> drew every game between now and the end of the season, we'd still have a massive chance of going down. Because that would only be 35 points. And 35 points last season, was it? Would have would have taken you down. Let me just double check. 2022, 23. Um, no, that is not. Yeah, anyway, 35 points. And more than certain would have taken you down last season. <clears throat> so, yeah. And look. Maybe if Everton were 12th in the Premier League, maybe if Everton's recruitment was spot on, maybe if Everton's owners weren't gutless cowards, then maybe we'd sit there and go, do you know what, we were unlucky again today, we probably should have won that game, we deserved more, etc, etc, etc. But, like I said after Fulham, I can't sit here and say, well, do you know what, we deserve to win that game, so I, I, I can deal with that. All as I can sit here and do is go, that's another defeat. That's another defeat. And by the way, I blame everybody. I do. I blame everybody. There's nobody I blame more than Bill Kenwright and Farhad Mashiri. Nobody. Those two are a disgrace. And anybody that backs them at this point as an Evertonian, you aren't an Evertonian. It's as simple as that. I don't give a shit if you think, oh, you, 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 people can have different opinions. I don't give a fuck. If you back them two, you aren't an Evertonian. It's as simple as that. But... Other people need to take blame as well. Dice made the right decisions today, but for the first two games of the season, he didn't. He has to take the blame. The players have to take the blame. Nobody takes responsibility. James Garner was woeful today. Okay, out of position. He was woeful. Ashley Young, woeful today. No leadership. You know, no responsibility on the pitch. Forwards are terrified to take a man on. Forwards are terrified to take a man on. Other players are terrified to shoot. People are terrified to throw a foot in. The, the recruitment team and Kevin Thelwell takes responsibility because whether or not he's dealing with low, you know, a low budget, whether or not he's dealing with, uh, you know, people that um, people that can't get deals, whatever, it's his job is to bring players in for Everton and he's failed at that so far. The rest of the recruitment team take the blame. Everybody, everybody has to take responsibility for what's going on at our football club at the moment. 
And the problem with Everton is nobody takes responsibility. That's the problem. Nobody. Adam says, Cam, you're talking nonsense. Who will create chances? You just said yourself we had 34 attempts on goal. We did have 34 attempts on goal. We did, yeah. But who was who was massively creative today? Tell me. Who was massively creative today? <coughs> If you think Everton can go a full season without a creative midfielder in there or a creative winger in there, then fair play to you, mate, because I just don't. I just really, really don't. Dobbin showed today that he's he's not ready. Simple as that. He, he had a goal. He ran around the kid, but he's not ready. He's not ready. James Garner isn't a winger. Let's be honest. James Garner is not a winger. He was awful today. And then, you know, if we'd have got a point out of that game, we'd be sitting here saying, poor you know, not good enough, we we know what the problems are, go and get a centre forward and maybe things will change. But we can't even hold on for a point. You know, a simple ball comes in, simple ball comes in. Can I just say, by the way, <coughs> Jose Sarr never had difficulty once with any of Everton's crosses today, not once. Why is that? Two reasons, because every set piece that Ashley Young took was fucking awful. And another one, because nobody stood on the goalkeeper. So every single time the ball was floated in, the goalkeeper had, you know, unlimited amounts of space to run out and to collect the ball. Three minutes to go. Wolves have a free kick, again created by Ashley Young, volleying the ball into the middle of the park for no reason. They put a man on the goalkeeper. Pickford runs out, doesn't get to it, and the ball goes in the back of the net. How many crosses did we put in the box today? How many um, corners did we have? How many free kicks did we have? <clears throat> not one of them. Not one of them caused the problem for Jose Sarr. Every one of them was think like a fucking parcel, like an Amazon Prime parcel. Yeah, lad, think then, there you go, collect that. Let me just take a picture of you with that ball sound. I'll move on. Every fucking one of them. Painful, painful. When Everton have got a free kick on the edge of the box and the ball just gets floated into the six foot five goalkeeper who's got nobody stood around him to challenge him for it. It I just Yeah. Look, maybe Maybe if Everton had, have had a centre forward today, we'd have won that game. Maybe if Everton had had a, a centre forward today, we'd have beat Fulham. Oh, sorry, uh, two weeks ago we'd have beat Fulham. And Dan Juma's is not a centre forward. He's not. And and this whole notion of oh, well, we've got X player who can play in multiple positions, he can't. Dan Juma can't play up front. He can't. It's as simple as that. Maybe, maybe we'll go and sign Beto, and maybe next week we'll bladder Sheffield United away. Maybe, maybe we'll then come back and we'll bladder Arsenal. Uh, you know, at Goodison, maybe. But how? And 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 this is a genuine question. I really want to know. There's nearly five hundred and fifty people watching here, and there'll be people watching as a, as a video as well. How can you watch that and take any positivity from it? How can you watch that and go, do you know what? Yeah, we're a centre forward away from being all right here. Because I just watch that and go. This just very much feels like last season did. And by the way, <clears throat> again, I don't think Sean Dyche is massively to blame for today. He's probably to blame. Well, he is because he's the manager and we've lost. But I don't think he was as to blame as he has been in previous seasons. But this whole notion that he kept Everton in the Premier League is bollocks. We won a couple of games with his system, right? But Everton were kept in the Premier League by a worldy by Abdu Raider Corey that nine times out of ten he puts in Rosehead and we end up going down. Same reason, it, same way as that Lampard didn't keep Everton in the Premier League the season before, the fans did. And Dominic Calvert Lewin's winning header did. So it's not like Dice come in in January, and everything was all of a sudden turned around, and we were unbelievable, that's not what happened, we got away with it, and as I said, I'm not blaming Dice for today, but I, 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 I just don't see where the whole loving and, 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 and feeling of that he's the best manager we've ever had comes from, I, I don't get it, I really, really don't get it, I'm sorry, but I just don't understand it, and yes, we were the better team today, 
And yes, we had the better chances. And yes, you know, on match of the day, they'll say Everton were unlucky and, and, and people might go, oh, Everton deserved it. Tell you where I'd much rather be now. I'd much rather be where those Wolves fans are saying, do you know what, we got lucky today and we weren't very good there, but we've won the game. This is, this is destroying me. It is, I'll be honest. It's fucking destroying me. And I wish with every fucking fibre of my being, with every inch of blood in my body, with every centimetre of bone I have, I wish I could just go, yeah, oh well, it's a game of footy. What is, whatever, put it down. Right, let's move on, let's get on with me day. I wish I could do that. I do. I absolutely wish I could just go, do you know what, it is what it is, what'll be will be, we'll either be alright or we won't, but I can't, this fucking destroys me, this absolutely destroys me, and like I said earlier on, don't care whether people like it or don't like it, I don't care whether people agree or don't agree, I just want to see Everton winning games of footy, and I'm at this point now where, am I that arsed if we beat Chelsea or Arsenal or Man United or if we beat fucking, I don't know, Bolton, Wigan, Sheffield Wednesday. I'm not that arsed. I just want to win games of footy because, like I said, it, it, it is Groundhog Day. We, at the moment, we are in purgatory. We are just floating around. We're neither good and we're not going down. And... I don't know what's worse. I don't. And I'm not saying I want Everton to be relegated, by the way, or I think relegation would be good for us because, again, you know, that would be on the notion that we'd go down and we'd win games and we'd come back up. That probably wouldn't happen. Not with these people in charge. We'd go down and we'd be terrible and we'd probably go down again. Um, But, you know, I just think... Let's look at Burnley for an example. And the 24 months that Burnley have had. Everton were told to with Burnley two years ago as to who will stay up and who will go. Burnley went. Nobody, regardless of what division they're playing in, nobody watching this video can tell me that Everton have had a better 24 months than Burnley have had. Went down, pissed the championship, won every week. Fans were loving it. Boss footy, new manager, great play, come back up. Nobody, nobody can tell me that Everton have had it better than Burnley in the last 24 months. And I'm just using them as an example because they went down when we were in a relegation battle. <clears throat> but, like I said, I don't watch today and come out of it with a positive mind frame. I don't watch Fulham and come out of it with a positive mind frame. And do you know what? It's not because I'm negative. It's not because I'm pessimistic. It's not because I want Dice to fail and I want Dice to be sacked and blah de blah de blah de blah It's nothing to do with that. Do you know why it is? It's because we've needed a cycle for two years. And every single game that goes by, it's quite evident how desperate we are for a centre-forward and yet we still haven't got one. Now, that might change in the coming days, depending on the Beto news, but why is it taking this long? Because you know what? Do you know if Beto comes in and scores 10 goals this season, but Everton go down, we'll all be sitting there saying, if only we had Beto in for the Wolves game, if only we had Beto in for the Fulham game. We are not a club that are in a position to allow three Premier League games to just be wasted and just thrown to the side. We aren't there. And listen, I'm, I'm sorry that this is negative. I'm sorry that this isn't very optimistic or very happy or whatever, but I've always been I've always been um, the same with this channel. I use this channel to come on and vent and give my feelings after a game of footy, and I'm not going to come on and go, well, we played well, so everything was all right when I'm sitting here fucking livid. Livid. But there you go. Whatever. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. One thing is for certain, we certainly can't afford to lose a fourth Premier League game on the bounce and we're away from home next week. So, who knows? Who knows? Um. Yeah. 
see what happens. If you've enjoyed it and you want to, give a like. If you're new and you, you fancy it, subscribe. Um, but, yeah, there you go. I'm off to... I don't know what I'm off to do. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. But, yeah, there you go. Cheers for watching. See you later.